Uh, you know, obviously this is a top fuel dragster. Uh, the engine produces 10,000 horsepower. Um, we have to service it every run, so that means we take everything out of it. Heads, rods and pistons, the clutch comes out every run. Um, a new clutch goes in it every run, and we service everything. Everything's good, it just goes back in. We put 14 litres of oil in it, um, 16 spark plugs every run. So there's a lot of uh, general, you know, wear and, you know, just consumables that go into it, apart from the fuel and everything. Um, but yeah, if you want to take a look around the car, we'll show you some bits here. Yeah? Obviously starting at the front, you know, this is the front wing. I mean, this, you know, this is a really important part because, you know, this, this directs the air. This, if it was up the other way, we'd have an aeroplane. So, you know, this, they're made of carbon fiber, they're really strong. And, you know, it's a real integral part of the car as everything is. But then really, the, you've just got tube chassis under here, a fuel tank, and that's basically it down the front. The rest of it, we move back down here. And then this is all tube really until you get to here, when under here is all the electrics for all the systems on the car. And then we move back to here, which is Suzanne's cockpit. And really, she's just got a steering wheel, parachute, fuel release, and that's it, you know, and a clutch and a throttle and a handbrake. And that's that's all that's in there you know there's seven point harnesses in here to you know protect them there's pads up in the roll cage so the heads can't move around so if the tire you know when you get tire shape they can't bang around and knock themselves out and then of course you move back to the engine so this fuel pump delivers like over 100 gallons a minute so you know there's so much fuel going into it you know you couldn't if you had a bucket you couldn't pour it in any quicker and then you have two 44 amp magnetos to fire all the fuel that goes into the engine. You've got two spark plugs for cylinder, but obviously they're still putting that back together. And then, of course, behind you, you've got the supercharger, which, you know, you have fuel goes in here. Yeah, it comes down here, goes into the manifold, but then you have fuel going into the top here. Then also on the heads, you have fuel that goes, is directly straight, straight into the cylinders. So you've got fuel coming in from everywhere. And then obviously you move back to the clutch, the clutch monkeys, uh, Dave, and, Dave and Max. Obviously the clutch is in there, it's, it's in a titanium clutch can. We're running a six disc clutch this, uh, from now on in the car. And uh, then behind it, you just have a cannon, which basically is a hydraulic clutch pedal basically. So when it's on the start line, it's engaged, it pushes in. It's just like when you leave the start line, you slip in the clutch. So when the car leaves, the clutch slips because it, it just, if you had 10,000 horsepower direct to the rear wheels, it'd just smoke the tires. So that controls it. So when Suzanne activates the throttle, she has to push it right to the floor. There's a button underneath it, which sets off the timers. So then that moves the cannon back in. You can set it out quite quickly it moves back so you can adjust it like I said if you if you pull you know if you pull away in your car and you slip the clutch you know the more you take your foot off the more it engages and that's basically what that does and then eventually it locks up and basically it's driving the back axle from the crank so it's just a direct feed through to the back and on it there's just a tiny reverser um, obviously when she backs up from the burnout you know and then you go up to the rear wing which they say you know, going through the finish line, there's about five tonnes of down pressure on it. And then around the back, we have, you know, two, two parachutes to stop the car from, you know, when they run over 300 miles an hour. And then the wheelie bar, everyone thinks this is to stop it pulling the wheels. Well, it is in a way, but it's also a traction device. So we change the height of the wheel. So if you want it to launch a bit harder, yeah, we, or certain you can just raise it up a bit. Or if you don't want it to come up so far, we drop it down a bit. Everyone goes, oh, the tires, you must go through them. You know, I mean, they can last, they can last one run, they can last 20 runs, you know. But these are, um, you know, they're so strong, they're unbelievable. You know, it's the punishment they go through. You know, they just stalk. You know, they're, if you look here, they're 36 by 17 by 5 by 16s, yeah. So you go in your tire shop and ask for a set of them. They go, what? But, you know, they're... 18, I think they're 18 inches wide, 17, 17 point five inches wide, you know, but when when they run at the end of the track, they'll probably be half that size because the centrifugal force makes them come in. 
This is a new engine today because we had some problems yesterday and uh, it burnt the cylinder heads and it, it broke number one connecting rod. So everyone was up quite late. You know, Runa and Lindsay were up till, I don't know. <laughs> I said to Runa, was it a late night? He said, no, it was an early start. So yeah. Yeah, really, it's just, you know, getting everyone back in the swing of things and, you know, we want to run three seconds, but, it, you know, we, we'd rather just go away at the end of the year with the castle intact and Suzanne, you know, happy and then we can, you know, get ready for next year's FIA Championship, which, you know, is what, you know, we want to win it, obviously, you know. We know how, how dangerous it is. I mean, I used to drive and stuff and you have to have, you have to have the utmost, uh, you know, confidence, you know, in the crew because, you know, you're playing with someone's life and this is when, when we get people come into the car, we go, if it's not 100%, don't bother. You know, if you're doing a job, do it. Don't go, I'll come back to it later. You've got to finish it because you forget, people forget. And then they go, ah, oh, when it's on the track, you go, oh, you know, and it's too late then. So, you know, you have to realize that you're playing with someone's life, whoever's driving the car, you know. So we, you know, that's the way we look at it. It's, you know, whoever's in the car, Suzanne or you know Liam used to drive it it's like you're you're playing with someone's life so you know we take it you know we all laugh and joke and you know we all take the piss out of each other but you know it, when we're working on the car we're 100% you know and then we will do everything in an hour to make sure the car's you know 100% safe. That was what we wanted 404 for Suzanne, but look at the number on the board for Anti Horto. 387, 298 miles an hour. That is his quickest run ever. I bet he's saying damn and blast. Why wasn't that the final at the European finals? But there we go. <laughs> was that worth the wait, folks? I think it absolutely was. What a storming pair of runs.